what's going on guys it's me train man and here we are on the whatever I call this place this is the Waterville and Blindside Bluff Railroad named of course for the two endpoints that we're building oh I never really went over the mission plan did I well point being here we are again back on the two foot gauge we're gonna get some work done with the texturing a little bit we put down some buildings right off the bat here you're about to see and I just figured to break up the monotony of this area, it might be better to have buildings in a line instead of the other way around. And I think I ended up leaving that building right there with its door fa Oh, no, 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 I put it on this side. Okay, that's right. So I put a line of buildings here because, you know, this area is going to be... It needs to be a little bit more populated. We have a lot of people theoretically on, on boats and stuff. By the way, we have the Pitchfork Dock now, um, aptly named. It was kind of what I was thinking, but I couldn't... I was thinking the Trident Dock, and then Weibold called it a Pitchfork Dock. And either way, it works. When you, If I ever pan and you see it. Uh, right now, we're just looking for trees, and I do remember that this is winter, so the trees, of course, don't have any, uh, don't have any leaves on them. We got this giant thing, though. That thing doesn't change. I was just looking for things that were maple, beech, and or birch, you know, to go with the tree spline that we'll be putting down here shortly. So I move up in terms of the months in order to get some leaves on the trees and see what they look like. Also, I switched to the 1950s glory days region, as provided by Jader, uh, for us uh, so that we can get some cars. Although, we're not going to be seeing any cars out here. This is, again, this is one of those areas. The only reason the two-foot gauge still exists is because this area is completely unconnected. Well, not completely, but more or less unconnected uh, to the rest of the world via any sort of road other than the railroad and some dirt trails. What we also do is we start building these spurs. Now... The concept behind the two-foot gauge in this map was that it originally was a very large network that spanned a huge area along the coast to the north of Troy, which is where we are, um, and to the north of Providence as well. When you guys see the map, you'll understand what, what's going on, but we, or they, rather, they used to occupy a lot of towns. There used to be a lot of small towns out there, most of them logging towns, but a couple of them uh, doing things like coal mining and, uh, you know, coal mining and things of that sort. Either way, you get farms out here, you get uh, trees and everything else you'll find in the woods. That's that's really what we're doing here. So now I'm filling this island with trees, whereas they decided not to chop down the trees on the island for whatever reason, and they use the boats that I haven't put down and probably won't be putting down because I don't think I can find what I really need to get here unless I go into that pile of ships in, uh, I don't know, somebody sent me to a website because I needed stuff for Davenport that Weibold finished rebuilding and, uh, yeah. Anyways, so trees, and then... I do something after I put the trees down. We're almost done with the trees here. I do something after I put the trees down, and that something is to adjust the train track to fit the trees. Now, instead of instead of building a main line like I was before, or even building a branch line, or in uh, the case that I'm thinking of, a former main line, uh, which was then downgraded to a branch line. That was my marker right there. I had to see if that boxcar fit under it. I'm moving the track to fit around the trees instead of moving the trees to fit around the track. Of course, we're, we're putting the tree splines in to match up with the track anyways, but the point is the builders of the two-foot gauge, because they're building two-foot gauge because they don't have a lot of money, obviously wouldn't be so inclined to chop down every single tree in their way. What they'd be more likely to do is to just chop down what they need to chop down and just build the tracks for the open space. Why? Because it's less expensive. And if you had the money to plow a right-of-way and to build 
the kind of, uh, to build the kind of, uh, gradient, or, you know, the grade separated and all that, that a normal railroad, a standard gauge railroad would warrant, then you wouldn't be building narrow gauge. You'd be building standard gauge. So, um, I think we're all set here. We go into working on stuff on the land. Oh, no, that's right. We just this. There we are. And we start attaching that properly. Okay, so that is the town. Trident Dock was just in view. We come over here, we come over here, we look around. Now, this area in my head was the result of a glacier. We're not, of course, it isn't that steep. Of It's not going to be a steep walled area, but this lake is a glacial lake. A lot of the mountains we're going to pass by are going to be drumlins facing towards the sea. If you don't know what drumlins are, go ahead and look them up. I only learned about them very recently in geology class, so uh, I just kind of like the idea of throwing that in there because that's what's on my mind right now. Also, Weibold gave me a seal of approval on this place, and I was really proud of that. I was really happy about that because uh, when when you make Weibold happy, things are good. So, if you notice, if you've noticed, we're missing a couple of those freight cars. I blame or passenger cars rather. I blame Jader because. When I got my uh, portion of the map back with Troy, a lot of my two-foot gauge stuff was missing, and so were some of my diesel engines that I put in there for the series. Um, I don't know quite why, but something's gone wrong, and I don't have some of my stock. So I'm going to have to go through and get the CDPs again, which thankfully I have saved in a convenient location, because I don't want to... Uh, because really, there have been so many sites that recently they've gone down, and uh, there are so many cool things that you can no longer get, um, or for a time you couldn't get, and it was really, it was a distinct possibility that you wouldn't be able to get them any longer. Uh, one of the things, of course, is the serpent. We've been coming across those troubles from from uh, the Logomotion series. We can't get the serpent anymore, nor some of the mods that originally were required for it. So. That's why I'm calling out to you guys on this one. But, point being, I'm saving these things in the case that if we are at a point where we need them, or somebody needs them, and the website is no longer available or operational, I'll be able to have them and, you know, spread the love when the original content creator is uh, more or less dead and gone. In, in the internet sense, at least. So we're building a line through here, and of course I'm building it wonky-like, because we're going to be traversing some land. We go through a pass between two drumlins, uh, which we'll get to in a minute, and I'm going to try and adjust that a little more to get the grades down. It's less than 2% uh, in any case, I think, and the whole track isn't a steady grade anyways. It is just kind of a contouring to the terrain, going up and down wherever necessary or wherever possible. And uh, that's really how these things would be built. Uh, I've I've not spent a lot of time, but I've spent time, uh, you know, out looking at uh, right-of-ways or looking at, uh, you know, all the stuff in the main Narrow Gauge Museum and the pictures and the videos that they have. And you see that they, they build this kind of stuff uh, without regard to the environment around them. And, and not in a bad way, not like, you know, spewing out uh, smoke and chopping down every tree in sight. Not, not that kind of you no know, regard for the environment around them, even though that's part of what they were doing. Um, but what I mean is they would build these railroad tracks through whatever they were presented with. It, if, if they needed to go over this hill, they would go over that hill, or they would find another way around, or, you know, it was the kind of thing where you didn't spend incredible amounts of time and or money uh, building your right of way. It was, you take the path of least resistance, and that's what you take. That's what you get. You don't get a lot of options uh, with that. Or rather, you do have a lot of options, just uh, you have to pick the best one, and that's what you're stuck with, because you're not going to be able to fit the bill for anything 
you know, anything more complicated or more pricey than that. Uh, so you're not going to be building any any or very many tunnels. Uh, bridges, trestles are easy. Um, you know, I should have used the main two foot... No, even the high trestle, I couldn't get over that lake. Uh, the lake was too deep. So again, we're, we're passing through these two drumlins, and I end up making them larger, and we're going to see more of these. Uh, there's going to be a big one next to... Worcester, which is the town we're coming up on. The Worcester, of course, is a Y shape. It is the connection between us and Providence. Uh, now, Providence is far off. Providence is more or less built. It's the next thing I have to do. Now that I have Davenport uh, back from Jader, and I don't need to do anything uh, real, real big or uh, you know, I don't need to hand it out for any sort of huge construction unless we need to build the connection between that and Leighton, which is the next town up on the pass. Uh, I'm going to keep that to myself, and when I get the chance, I'm going to merge this route with that route. But I don't need to do it yet. Uh, I think the best course of action would actually be to finish um, Waterville through Worcester and onto Blindside Bluff, which might be, re which might need to be renamed, but onto Blindside Bluff, and you know, get that all settled before connecting, before attaching them, and then making, and then building the connection. I should say, uh, there are a couple more connections that need to be built in the meantime, so there isn't really any pressure on me right now to get this done. Also, more to the point, we don't really need this section for filming. This this was, the two-foot gauge was something I threw in just because I wanted a two-foot gauge. And it's mainly going to be filled with comic relief. Even Lee's Line isn't going to be something that's visited very heavily. There are, you know, it is an integral part of the system, but it's not a detailed, intricate, or really interesting part of the system, despite being one of the more good-looking. And that's not a testament to my own creativity, that's a testament to the fact that I think I like the look of these going through the woods and meandering through the hills sort of deals. As opposed to your uh, main line through the mountains, which is scenic, you know. You, kn you know it's scenic, but it's uh, not got the kind of appeal, I think, uh, that this kind of quaint line does. And that's, and that's really the word I was trying to come up with. So we're going to be working on this more next week. I need to figure out exactly what I want to do here. I would have recorded more, of course, but I got distracted with having to piece together uh, and check out a couple of other routes, notably uh, up to the summit of, you know, Milky's building. Milky's building up to the summit, or he, he built up to the summit. And New Davenport as well. I tried to go with the impact bit tool, decided I didn't like it, so I'm just going to have to uh, redo the mountains in such a way that I can put the track up them without needing to use the embankment tool or, uh, you know, coming at them at an awkward angle. And I believe that's something we fix right as we're about to time out here. We've got, what, 30 seconds or so? That was two minutes of in-game time for me at four times speed. And I come back to this end. Which end am I at? I honestly can't tell. There's a point where I, I wrapped it around, yeah, right here. I decided that it would be better looking like that. And so that's the way it is. We just try to come at the hills from a perpendicular angle in order to make the track work look good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week. I think an obsession's coming up. Drop your ideas in the comments section. I don't care what they are. Either game, either playstyle, either anything. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be driving trains soon. Trey Man out.